Hey everyone, welcome back to my home studio. So this is my day 17 of my quarantine distraction videos that I'm doing while my students and I are uh, doing remote learning. Um, I'm just trying to do a video a day to help keep us all thinking about clay on our brains um, with um, one exception and that was yesterday. I'll talk about that more in a minute. But today's video is talking about how to make eggs. And these are spherical sort, sort of forms, except I've tapered them so they're more elongated. They're going to be eggs. And they are wheel thrown. So I'm going to demonstrate how to do that. And then tomorrow, on tomorrow's video, I'm going to be trimming them and show you how to trim these and actually make something that looks more, more like an egg. Now, I did want to mention one thing about yesterday's video. Yesterday I did a video um, and I said in the beginning of the video that I had a lot happened and I didn't have a chance to get down into my studio to work on an actual clay video. Um, what happened yesterday was my daughter was um, ill. She has had a fever for a few days now and a cough and um, when I called the pediatrician's office they suggested that we quarantine her. They said they would not be testing her for coronavirus because she has no known exposure. So in the state of Ohio, they're not testing unless you have a direct, you know that you have been directly exposed. So I, I made some masks because I'm trying to keep the rest of the family healthy. So she's putting on a mask when she comes out of her room and comes down to the kitchen and everything. So it's just trying not to spread her germs around the house, right? And I made multiple masks so I can launder them. Um, I thought it was just a little educational tutorial video on how to make a mask. That's all I intended by it. I'm certainly not a medical doctor. I'm not naysaying anything. I'm not supporting anything. I'm just trying to be proactive. And I got trolled. And it was really bizarre. Um, you're not going to see the comments there because I did remove the comments, but it was a uh, very bizarre. The um, the rant that uh, this person went on and saying that I was uh, they they attributed political beliefs to me that weren't even mine. It was really bizarre. So I'm hoping that I didn't get a lot of other people riled up by it because certainly that wasn't my intention. I was just showing you what I did yesterday when I couldn't be in my studio. And um, maybe it will help some people to make masks if they wanted to make masks. So, sorry, I digress. But anyway, I hope you enjoy seeing how you can make an enclosed spherical form uh, like an egg. And tune in tomorrow and you can see how I trim them. Alrighty, I'm going to start off by throwing um, off the hump. This is uh, one that I show in another video when I throw minis. You could go ahead and center each individual hunk to make the individual eggs, but I'm going to center just the top portion of the larger piece. And throwing off the hump is a nice way that you can throw multiple pieces. So you can just throw, you can just center the top piece, but or you could go ahead and center the whole thing. When I'm throwing off a hump, I do try to create a little distinction right down here. I apologize, I seem to have a weird um, little scraping noise with my wheel. I'm not too sure what's going on with it. It just started today. So I looked underneath there and couldn't find anything. Now I am going to drop the middle, but I am rounding it. So it's going to be round on the inside, just like it's a little bowl. So if I pick this up and show you, okay. So you can see it's rounded on the interior and the depth of the opening uh, does not go down as deep as this, this angle out here on the outside. 
um, where this angle is happening, that's where I'm going to be ending up by trimming it off. And of course, I don't want the hole to go that deep. If I want to have a bottom on it, I need to stop short of that. Now I'm going to just go ahead and throw this into a narrow cylinder. I want to keep it narrow. You don't want it to flare out because if you're going to close it off, you want to keep it very, pretty much angling inward. I'll come on this side a little bit more so you can see my hands. I was getting the water puddle out of there. Okay, then I'm going to do one more pull. Then I'm going to close it off. Now I'm going to take a knife blade and I'm going to cut back in just a little bit. This will make it a little bit easier for the trimming process. And then, okay, once I've trimmed it, then I'm going to take a fettling knife cut through and lift it off. So you can see this is closed at the bottom. I'll leave that set aside. Now it'll come back to when it's other hard. So let's do this again. I'm going to recenter the top for another, um, for throwing off the hump again. Once it's centered, I'm gonna drop the hole, open it, but leave it rounded. Then I'm going to pull up on the wall. And I'm going to collar. And as I collar, I usually do one more pull to strengthen it. A compression pull after you collar is always helpful. And I collar it to the point where it's closed off. If you have much of a nub in there left over at the top, you can remove it. Then I'm going to take the tip of the wooden knife, carve inward a little bit. And then I'm going to trim this. Now, if I were doing a pot where I were, say, going to trim a foot, I could do like a secondary bat on this, like where I make a cut and then leave a hunk of clay. But since I'm going to round this evenly, I'm not worried about that. I do show that on my minis uh, video when I'm trimming that. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this into more of them and you can see what they look like. Sure.